times. But uh, so t- changing China's geopolitical orientation away from Iran, uh, somehow renegotiating uh, how the Belt and Road is going to go, be structured, how it's going to flow and so forth, so that it would favor Western interests and not Chinese interests. So here's Joshua Wong in Congress with Nancy Pelosi and a bunch of other Congress people. They absolutely gave him top billing. Um, it's my honor and pleasure to invite you. And I strongly recognize today is a remarkable day to show how the new bipartisan consensus on China foreign policy under the uprising China model and the hotline suppression of President Xi to Hong Kong. Hong Kong has never walked alone in the front line to confront the front line dictatorship. In such a popular battle, we were not hard to be pressed. But in the past three months, in such summer of discontent, we strongly realized people in the free world strongly support Hong Kong people continue our fight. Today is a remarkable day also emphasize how the efforts of Hong Kongers in the past three months is not only included inside Hong Kong, but also overseas Hong Kongers, no matter Anna, Jeffrey, and Brian based in the United States, and others of our friends live all around the world to show that we stand as one, we stand in solidarity, Hong Kongers never walk alone, and we will continue our uphill battle until the day we enjoy freedom and democracy. Thank you for showing the bipartisan consensus. It really impressed Hong Kongers. Thank you. Okay, there he is. That's Joshua Wong. He's very pleased with uh, his speech. And uh, he said, thank you for your bipartisan consensus. So what the U.S. is attempting to do is to slowly peel Hong Kong away from China and make it a U.S. protectorate. I mean, that's ideally what they would like to do. But in reality, will they actually be able to pull that off? Well, I don't know. I really don't think so. I really don't think so. And, uh, you know, I think Speaker Pelosi and all these people lined up there with this kind of show of force behind this kid uh, that they've elevated as the sort of spokesperson for freedom and democracy uh, for Hong Kong. It's, Hong Kong is belongs to China. It always has. Uh, it was only a British colony for the period that it was, for the, you know, the better part of a century or whatnot. Uh, it was only a British colony because... Uh, because the British basically stole it from China. And then we'll go back to the opium wars and so forth. So the Hong Kong is, there's a bill of rights on human rights and democracy. It's been enacted. This is U S are trying to pass a law. Basically it's like a kind of Chinese Magnitsky act basically. And, uh, the U S have a certain arrangement whereby every year they have to kind of review their relationship. Uh, they, they give Hong Kong special status, and from that, U.S. companies get favorable uh, tax rates who are based there. So do Chinese companies as well. So everybody benefits from this special status. The U.S. is threatening to revoke that unless uh, the democratic uh, freedom and democracy demands are met from these protesters who held the, uh, the, the city hostage uh, over the summer. And so the the whole idea that there's going to be one country with two systems, uh, that's I, I really don't think that's going to happen. That's just my opinion. Uh, I think Hong Kong is part of China. I think the U.S. is blowing smoke. And they've found this kid who is apparently marketable enough for them to use as a mascot for this issue. And they're flying him around. He'll be speaking at all these sort of Silicon Valley Big think, big tent events, and so forth. It'll be at Google. He's kind of a, he's, he's got a permanent career now as a kind of freedom celebrity. Uh, so his his job is to promote regime change in China, and he'll be doing it for the rest of his life. Literally, this guy will be be gray. Uh, he'll it'll be in twenty fifty. He'll still be running around calling for regime change in China if it hadn't already happened on its own anyway. But uh, the the U.S. is completely asleep to. The reality, I wonder what they're thinking sometimes over there in Washington. So that's the virtue signaling on China. It's a bipartisan thing. 
So the Democrats are completely behind uh, fomenting unrest in China, as is the Republican Steve Bannon is putting a lot of resources behind that. And he's got his little alt media shock troop team or whoever's you know on the payroll for uh, agitating over in Hong Kong. They've got a few of these characters running around. I don't really know what they achieved. But uh, so that's that's a U.S. deep state agenda, basically. And it's being couched in this uh, freedom and democracy business. And then there's Greta Thunberg. Greta Thunberg is the uh, young yes. Swedish girl. And uh, so she's been doing her whirlwind tour. Should, I think she's in the U.S., so we're going to listen to should, Greta here. Why should we study for a future that is being taken away from us? <laughs> That is being stolen for profit. And some people say we should study to become climate scientists or politicians so that we can, in the future, solve the climate crisis. But by then, it will be too late. We need to do this now. Okay, there it is. That's Greta Thunberg. We need to do this now. So the, the basic message to the student climate strikers is, you know, why study? Why go to school? Uh, because the adults have taken your future away already. That's what she's sort of selling there. And people have to realize that she travels with a coach, a manager, a PR. script. They do the script writing. And she's got a multi-million dollar, more than a multi-million dollar, tens of millions of dollars, uh, maybe more, a PR machine behind her. And she's doing her world tour. She gets easy access into government and so forth. So she, people are saying this is a grassroots movement. Okay, If this was a grassroots movement, they wouldn't be opening the doors of government to her and so forth. She wouldn't be able to run and do what she's doing, and she's standing on stage here. That production was at least, at least half a million dollars. That's just for this particular rally here so i mean add it all up we're talking tens hundreds of millions of dollars by the time this is all over uh that's not grassroots this is astroturfing this is the greenwashing industry uh this is wall street level city of london level as well so people need to realize that the establishment uh yeah they do have money invested in oil and gas and petrochemicals and all these things that are polluting the planet and so forth. I don't want to get into an argument about climate change and the how that argument is actually framed. I, that's for another program, maybe. But the establishment have multiple agendas that they are backing simultaneously to make sure that they will profit, maximum profit, off of every single possible one that's going to catch fire and go big time. And this is one of those. And people can't get their heads around the same establishment that would be backing and investing money in oil's futures is also going to want to put money in this uh, in green derivatives, carbon taxes. There's lots of people at the feeding trough on this. And Greta Thunberg, this poor girl who I think is being absolutely used, she's been sacrificed by her parents at the altar of this new, what we call, uh, it called a green command economy or green capitalism. And this isn't just about making money like before. This is about really making big money. This is about creating and inflating a new green bubble. And all bubbles pop by the end. And this one, like all previous bubbles, will also pop. But this is about people, a, a whole new class of uh, billionaires, um, and they're backing this. Bill Gates is backing it. Oh, my gosh, what Bill Gates put out this week. He wants to spray. Bill Gates wants to spray a chemical cloud in the upper atmosphere to protect us from the sunlight. I swear Bill Gates has said this publicly this week. So everybody who's talking about, you know, chemtrails was a conspiracy theory. Well, there's Bill Gates right there. So, so Greta is on her world tour and she's doing her thing. And what, what's the result of this? And she's only 16, and I personally bet she's going to be, you know, rebelling against her parents by the end of it. But then we, we see this story. This came out, I think this was on the news wires in the U.S. They, 
according to one teen, this is a Canadian teen here, uh, she's pledged not to have children. She's getting a lot of publicity until her government takes serious action against climate change. And it's uh, getting support from children and young people around the world. So it's kind of like an envi- a green incel movement, basically. So saying we're not going to uh, uh, have children uh, until you sort out the climate. And it's very vague what actually needs to happen or what is happening is vague. Uh, there's a lot of argument on there, and what needs to happen is vague as well. So she's basically saying kids are refusing to have – so basically it's saying they have no future. So what, what Greta and what this, this PR effort, this campaign has done is they are creating a generation of nihilists that have no that, – that believe they have no future and that the world is basically uh, – that – that the world is going to end in a couple of years. Some people are saying, I've seen 12 years, their their fate will be sealed in 12 years because of climate breakdown, this concept of climate breakdown. Um, There's a a, a story in Bloomberg. I'll give you an example of the propaganda. There's a story in Bloomberg News basically saying that uh, the uh, climate refugees have already started from Florida. And apparently because of the hurricane that recently hit Florida and the area and the Florida Keys, that uh, people are leaving. And, and so you read the headline, you think, why, why would people leave the Florida Keys? Well, if it's because of climate change, as, as the Bloomberg story uh, seems to infer, you think that, oh, it's because of sea level rising. And I read the article, and I read it, and I keep reading it. There's no sea level rising. No, why are people, they're leaving because of damage to their houses from the hurricane. The government's offering a bailout cash to leave the house so the, go- the government's trying to depopulate some some parts of these islands after the hurricane and they're offering cash and people are taking it so they're calling them climate refugees i grew up in florida when i was a kid and we had hurricanes we had tornadoes we had hurricanes we had all sorts of big tropical storms and back then back then uh they were called we had this we had a name for them back then they're called hurricanes now they're not called hurricanes anymore it's called extreme climate or climate breakdown it's just a hurricane they've been happening since the beginning of time but they've it's been rebranded and so what do you get what's the result of this i'm going to play you a clip this is the result this is a a child at one of at the climate strike here i would i would say she looks like she's about 10 11 years old 12 max and here she is. Uh, listen to this. I just don't know if they're going to do anything. And I just, I'm so concerned with the fact that if they're not going to change anything, then what's going to happen to humankind? What's going to happen to our, what's going to happen to the whole world? If, if no one does anything. Okay, so that's it. And this was in Australia, I believe. So this is a global this this campaign is very effective it's global and this the, so this child thinks that she has no future this is the road to nihilism nihilism it, it get, brings you to the point where there's no point in living and you basically become destructive self-destructive and it, it look at there's people that will argue that the extreme end of uh, jihadist terrorists this is it is nihilistic in many ways uh we're talking about isis as well so destructive self-destructive um so where is this going to end what what are we doing we're raising a whole generation of nihilists basically and is this the right is this the right way to go is this the right thing to do this is the question and uh nasim talib uh looking on his blog here uh the author the professor the philosopher of source he's got a word that he this is in the urban dictionary by the way it's called pedophrasty and the definition is um, argument involving children to prop up a rationalization and make the opponent look like a beep an a-hole uh, as people are defenseless and suspend all skepticism in front of suffering children nobody has the heart to question the authenticity or source of the reporting often done with the aid of pictures can also describe the exploitation of babies by professional beggars who rent them from their parents and use them 
uh, as potent appendage in their trade. Uh, remember that children tend to grow and need to be replaced. And this is also how the White Helmets narrative was sold as well. You always saw every video, every image of the White Helmets always carrying a baby, always carrying a baby, constantly. So a, you, you, you'd be hard-pressed to find an adult that got rescued by the, uh, the great White Helmets. But that's how they sold this in the West. And the object was to demonize the Syrian government, and therefore people would be you know, supporting U.S. Uh, covert actions to undermine uh, the government in Syria and to destroy the country, basically, uh, and to foment the civil war, etc., keep it going. So that all started under the Obama administration with the White Helmets and went into Trump. It's kind of still continuing with Trump. But so it's the same type of thing. So whether it's Banner of Aleppo, whether it's the White Helmets in Syria, whether it's Greta Thunberg, whether it's the way they use the Parkland uh, uh, kids, students as well, uh, Sandy Hook. There's a new article, uh, a new video from the Sandy Hook uh, Promise organization. It's the most horrific thing I've ever seen. I thought it was a episode. I thought it was a trailer for a new Purge movie. It turns out it wasn't. Uh, actually, I'll, oh, I don't have time to play this at the moment, but you can go look on uh, Truthstream Media's Twitter page, and they post it as well. It's called Back to School Essentials. Uh, let me play this, actually. This is just so ridiculous. You have to hear this. It's, it's meant like a back to school advert, but you can hear in the background. I'll give you a play-by-play, actually, here. So let's... This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. So he's running from a shooter. This jacket is a real must-have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. He's using his skateboard to smash a window to escape a mass shooting. These scissors really come in handy in our class. Nine-year-old with scissors ready to stab the shooter. These new socks? They can be a real lifesaver. Using socks as a tourniquet because her leg's bleeding. I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. <laughs> yeah, right before she's supposed to be killed by a mass shoe, they say, it's back to school time, it says in the ad. You know what, you know what that means, it says. And then it ends with the Sandy Hook Promise video. I mean, this is just outrageous. This is, is, this is a level of demagoguery that is, I've never, a lot of people have commented they've never seen anything like this before. So literally, if you want to talk about trauma-based psychological conditioning on a mass scale, that's what this is. And they're doing it right at the beginning of the school year and basically saying, get ready for mass shootings. And, uh, you know, grab what you can and, uh, you know, to smash a window or stab somebody or um, and then have your phone ready so you can send your last message as this child did in the ad. It's disgusting. So whatever the intent is from this ad, uh, it seems to be, I don't know, to scare people into taking action on gun control or whatever. There's a political modus operandi behind it. But the effect of this on people subconsciously and psychologically is negative. And it's it's horrifying. So, you know, it's the same with the green issue and all these other issues as well. So using children, using children in, in, in kind of weaponized advertising formats, the demagoguery that we've never seen before. It's unbelievable. And uh, I, I think there's going to be a backlash against this. I think uh, whoever the political activist or third sector, Quango, NGOs, whoever's producing this ad, uh, Sandy Hook Promise, apparently it's the Sandy Hook uh, families producing this ad. This is just, this, you, you can't make an argument that this is the right way to go. Whatever your objectives are, this is just not good. On so many different levels, it's very bad, negative. So this is disturbing, uh, to say the least. Uh, so you've got all of this going on, and this is the new this is the new trend. 
This is the new trend. It's it's using children as as battering rams uh, to 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 ram through whatever the agenda is, whether it's regime change in China, uh, whether it's uh, regime change in Syria, whether it's uh, uh, adopting a carbon tax, uh, whether it's uh, banning guns or gun control in America, uh, or whether it's I don't know. Pick your issue. They've got a kid or someone, a youth person that they're broadcasting globally and turning into celebrities. It's kind of like political pop idol. You have performance activists because that's what they end up doing full time. They're performance activists. They have handlers. They have a PR team. They have to, 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 to deliver like a politician does. And they just do this full time. And they're producing these, these really twisted and dark uh, video ads and they're uh, speechless. I, I I spoke to a lot of people that watched this uh, in the last, say, 12 hours online. And a lot of them are just speechless. They don't really know what to, what to say. It's just so off the edge, basically. So th- this is where Greta is heading. So nihilists, uh, people who have given up on the world... Uh, who don't think there's any hope for the future, uh, don't be surprised uh, if that turns into uh, not not just climate striking from school, uh, but you're raising a generation of people that just end up being, mm, let's say, reckless. I'll leave it there. And use your imagination. Read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Okay? They're creating a monster here. Conceptually, it's a monster. So I'm all for green and clean energy and... I'm, I'm, I'm as green as, as, as some of the biggest environmentalists, but not because, not because I'm frightened by a doomsday theory, because I think it's the right thing to do, or it makes good sense. It makes common sense, or it makes economic sense. And that's how we should be motivated, not by somebody creating a theory or a scenario, a doomsday scenario that's not based on uh, any, any real fact or evidence or any real science. Uh, but it's got an emotive narrative attached to it, and that's going to drive our behavior and to drive society to, to, to go towards a certain policy. That's not the right way. That's not the right motivation, in, in my opinion, and many other people's. We should be doing it because it makes sense, because it's the right thing to do, not because uh, someone's created a doomsday scenario that uh, the world's going to end in, in 15 years if we don't pass some sort of legislation and anybody who questions that uh, narrative is 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 ostracized as a heretic or a denier that sounds a lot like religion to me that's what re- that's what fundamentalist religions are like if you you're, you're a denier you're a heretic uh, you're non-believer uh, therefore you're ostracized you're you're hunted down and you're persecuted sounds like the Spanish Inquisition to me that's exactly what this is. This is just a technocracy version of that. That's where we're headed, and this is there's billions of dollars being plowed in that direction as we speak. And uh, I encourage people to go look at the work of Corey Morningstar, The Wrong Kind of Green. Uh, there's a link to her, her blog, actually, on our show page, and you'll get some more information there about uh, what's really behind Greta Thunberg. We're going to take a short commercial break. And we're going to connect our next guest. We're going to quest, ask questions about 5G, uh, some really important questions.